eight original and a one point oh two four final. There's gonna be some sweet in there. You think? Yeah. Do you think you're gonna want to go listen to some mayhem afterwards? Nah. be all like, yeah, black metal, because I don't listen to a whole lot of black metal, so I think we better get started, because it looks like it's creeping up out of the bottom. <laughs> it sure does. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here, but uh, welcome back to another session of the Hoppery. Uh, the head on this beer, the black metal uh, from Jester King out of Austin, Texas, 10.4%, is starting to sneak up out of the bottle, so... Uh, we're trying to get this uh, in motion as quickly as possible, but you know, I've really, really, really been looking forward to this beer. You know, there's just something about massive, massive Imperial Stouts that, you know, they intrigue me because they yeah. can go so many different directions. Yeah. And honestly, the first thing that I want to say on this one that I'm going to taste is probably sweet. But other than that, it's going to have to show me what it's going to be. You know? Well, and you were talking about the original gravity and the ending gravity and things like that. And, you know, how you're imagining this is going to be sweet. I have not had this beer. Um, I've actually had it for, I don't know, maybe three or four months. I uh, got this from uh, a nice gentleman down in Austin, Texas, which is actually where this brewery is from. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I've seen a couple of reviews on this one. And, uh, you know, you've got to give it to Jester King. They have the absolute best beer labels on the market. Um, I reviewed the Witchmaker Rye PA uh, back when I originally got that one and just wanted to kind of hang on to this one for a little bit, let it kind of settle down a little bit. As you can tell right here, it's not settling down one bit. But I think it's time that uh, I probably go ahead and pour this one <laughs> I mean, in the glass. This thing is seriously bubbling like yeah. a devil's cauldron coming out of the top of this bottle. And as you can see, as Mark's pouring this thing into the glass, it's about as jet black as you can get. I mean, yeah. seriously, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's like the darkest black crayon you can find. I really love that head color on there. You know, I, I always talk about this. Reminds me of the uh, the Cigar City Hunapus uh, Imperial Stout, where it's got this real dark, roasted, milk chocolatey colored head on it, real aggressively colored. Tight, small little bubbles. So, yeah. I mean, good solid grain bill on this beer, which at what 11, no, 10.4 percent, it had to have a good solid grain beer. But yeah, mm -hmm. I can smell it already. I mean, the the sweet yeah. chocolate flavors are already starting oh, to yeah. come my way. Let's dig in I, there, yeah, man. It's a must. You know, it, it really, man. It does have this really dark blueberry, chocolatey sort of aroma with a lot of coffee. What are you smelling? Kind of your 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 darker sweet dried fruit almost, mm -hmm. you know, not so much like a raisin, but you know, a, a like if a quad was like an a, imperial stout. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it's got some some sweet dark fruits in there. Mm -hmm. Definitely some chocolate. Yeah. Even if maybe a little bit of vanilla. That yeah. I, I can't quite tell you where it's coming from, but it, it's somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic. I really like it. flavors. There's almost like this light perfumey quality to it, you know, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but I think it probably has something to do with, you know, the chocolate and those dark fruits and like blueberries and, you know, just a really good smelling beer. And you're right. I mean, it's very, very, very dark. So yeah, there's no sand for this thing at all. Well, man, here's to uh, black metal. Maybe I should listen to it a little bit more, but uh, maybe I'll want to after drinking this beer. Definitely get 
getting some burn in there from the booziness. Yeah. But aside from that, this thing is like drinking Yoohoo. I mean, yeah, it's, it's smooth. Yeah. It is very silky, very yeah. silky on the palate. It's 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 one of those mm -hmm. beers that when you take a drink of it, it, it's not so much that you're you're taking a drink of it. It's almost like foam just kind of washes oh, all yeah. the way through, you know, mm -hmm. the drink and through the finish. So you literally get flavor through the whole drink. Yeah. I mean, you've got chocolate going down, cocoa. Mm -hmm. Man, that's there's a lot of different flavors in this beer, and I, you it know. reminds me a lot of. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have the oakiness. Um, but it really reminds me of KBS, you know, mm -hmm. Founders Imperial Stouts really have this sort of dank, cave-like mm -hmm. character that I always talk about, and I kind of get that out of here. Kind of a basement must. Yeah, definitely. Very musty. Musty, but chocolatey. Mm -hmm. Lots of coffee. That friggin' mouthfeel yeah. on this thing it's is brilliant. just, a, it's, it's ridiculous. Really, yeah, it's really nice. You know, I, we've had one other beer on, that we've done on the show. It was a short that I think I did one time. It was the uh, Firestone Walker Velvet Merlin. Mm -hmm. Honestly, other than the mouthfeel, I wasn't a very big fan of that beer, but mm -hmm. that one was similar to this, although not nearly as, as viscous. That one yeah. was almost watery. But the way that it just foamed. did get a lot of flack for that one, I too. Know, yeah. People hated me for that one. Yeah. But. Jameson, be nice. <laughs> It's, it's okay, <laughs> you know, but I'm, but I'm using it to compare a good thing this time. Yeah. Well, in two different styles, too. Yeah, you know, that one's a porter. It's going to be a little bit lighter. This is supposed to be really big and robust. I, I think the thing that's kind of perplexing to me, um, and it's a very good thing I want to add, is that, you know, you really expect this to be annihilating. You know, it's got the name Black Metal, and it's this big, huge Imperial Stout. But... If I have to really ultimately compare this to a beer, and guys at Jester King, get ready, write this down because this is going to make you <laughs> extremely happy. This actually really reminds me a lot of the Kate the Great yeah. that we drank. Yeah, you know, the, I mean, how it came out of the bottle just a you know a, a short few months after it was bottled, and yeah. it already came out as smooth as if you had been aging it for mm -hmm. a while. I mean. The flavors have meant, you know melded together on this one already. I mean, it's. I feel like Barry White music is playing in my mouth because the silky, the silkiness. Uh, there's like uh, my, my tongue is a silk sheet right now. I, I wish you had a disco ball to drop. Right I, I, I do too <laughs> because I'll tell you what, man, it really is a great, great beer. No, it, it, it's a good, satisfying drink. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those. Now we've you know recently reviewed uh, Lost Abbey that definitely mm -hmm. was not a sipper. You know this. This is a sipper. It's a sipper. It is a it's sipper. Definitely a sipper. Yeah. You definitely want to get you know a couple of your boys over or girls. You know I know it's not just guys watching this show, but you know I, I don't think I think it'd be a, kind of a selfish ass to to sit around and drink this one by yourself. But I mean I honestly have to tell you I like this one as much as I like Kate the Great. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's the uh, recipe. You can tell the recipe is absolutely yeah. solid. Yeah, they, there's a little bit of that back end bitterness that shines through. It's fantastic, man. I mean, if a Tootsie Roll was the best thing you ever ate, that's kind of what this would taste like. It's got that caramely, chewy, chocolatey, slight coffee, you know, flavor. Even um, better, you don't have to have an owl lie to you about how long it takes to get to the middle of it. Exactly. You just have to pop the cork and you're there. Yeah. Well, and this one doesn't have a cork. No, I actually have a cap. It had a cap. You just have to pop a cap. You dirty cap up. I just popped a cap. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're starting to digress, but I, you know, I, I personally, I'll tell you, you need to go out and buy yeah, one of yeah. these. Excellent beer. I mean, I, I know outside of Texas, they're tough to get. Yeah. Your, you know, That's really true. tough to get your hands on, but. If you're in Texas and you can easily get one of these, or you have a cousin or an auntie or, or you know somebody, somebody in Texas, Texas get one. Call it's, them up yeah. and say, "Hey, I need you to go find this beer. It's very easy to find. It's got the most awesome label in the world. It's called the Jester King Black Metal. Could you please buy five of them and send them to me? They're fantastic. Very, very it, good. It would be worth the. Uh, yeah. It would be worth the shipping. Well done, Jester King. I really, really enjoyed this beer. So go Texan. Yeah, Texas forever. Friday night lights. Don't mess with Texas. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next time. My name is Mark Starr. And I'm Tim Pratt. Cheers. Cheers.